Welcome back to Weekend at Bernie's Garage. So we're in the house today for a few minutes for giving a little introduction. Um, this video is a little bit long. It's a step-by-step -step basically on uh, installing a pillar bearing in a Toro snowblower. So it's a, like I said, the video is a bit long. It's longer than what I usually post, but uh, I'm sure uh, somebody installing the bearing uh, is definitely going to help them along the way. So a lot of good information there. So, uh, uh, we have this one here that we're doing and I think we may have some work on our hand a bit later on. Uh, anyway, so if you like what you see, uh, subscribe, uh, comment, like, and uh, we'll see you in the garage. Okay, so uh, welcome back to Bernie's Garage. So uh, today we have something a little different. Uh, we'll show her. Uh, we're going to be uh, putting an uh, impeller bearing. Of course, I fell out. So, an impeller bearing. And we got the two flanges, comes with the two. Top and bottom flange. And we're going to be putting in this. It's a Toro Power Max Heavy Duty 928. So, so is there a 1300 series? Uh, not that it matters, uh, by doing it off of these uh, will work and uh, they're pretty well out of the same, pretty well the same bearing and album, uh, whether it's uh, various models of Toros, uh, I'm going to say in the last 10-15 years. Okay, so with it tipped up, I'm going to use my phone right now. We can see uh, these uh, snowblowers that are a big rate out of the impeller is actually uh, is actually supported into it. But what you look at after, I have my phone and at the same time, is if you look down here where the shaft goes in, it's a lot of, a lot of play on it. You can see uh, she's moving up and down a lot. So it's a sure sign that the bearing is gone. Uh, so a lot of times you see it ain't throwing the snow as far or uh, you think oh the belt's wore out a lot of times it's not the belt sometimes it is but most times this bearing is uh, definitely uh, a part that's, uh, that wears a lot and again uh, when we looked at the bearing earlier it's not a roller bearing like which in something like a, like a Honda would have or uh, some other uh, snow blowers it's actually a brass bushing and other than a little bit of grease you're going to put on it when you assemble it that's the only bit of grease that's probably ever going to see until it wears out. So anyway, uh, we're going to take it apart and uh, we'll show you how to put it in. Okay, so we're in the garage and uh, as you can see we're a little bit stuck on room. Here, I just got her shoved in here between here and a while. We got the truck, sled, couple of cars and the toolboxes all the way down there. So multiple trips back and forth. But anyway, so we start by taking uh, this stuff out here. Uh, we got to get this piece off that controls uh, up and down of the chute and the other side. Uh, it's pretty easy. We let the cable go and let this go. So we take this bolt out here. I'm going to take two of these off here and uh, show you now we get on this. pulls up so just right now now we're gonna lay the screw back in here of course that's a bigger screw so as if you haven't had a look at it before the uh, screw here and you'll pop this out and that disconnects the cable off it it's going to quite more than it. Okay. 
All I have is you pull the cable up, tips up out of that. Get the screws here first, because the cable is actually attached to the screw right here. You track it easy a little. Mm -hmm. Here, here, cable just lifts up and out. There's a cable off. And this rod here, uh, with this piece on here, she's let go back here, just pulls out. So you take that and put that aside. Now, what we have to do next is we have to take these bolts out here, take the cover off, and I'm pretty sure it's a uh, 8mm here. So I have a pack of those rules on one. Take this, pull it out, and we put that aside. So this has come off as well. It's only a uh, right under. Side. So we got the piece uh, separated right there. But um, what we had to do next, obviously, we had to take the shoe piece off because we're going to separate the body, uh, uh, the shoot from the body, or, the, or we'll split the body in two pieces, whatever way you, you guys talk about. It. So is it next? Screw here, screw here, take the cable off. Then when we get at it, it's three bowls here, three on the other side, and if you look at the middle one, the middle one here got a gap into it here, so you can take the top and bottom completely out, you can loosen this one back until you to see two or three treads, it'll aid and help you get it back together. So uh, anyway, I'll let's get the tail piece out there. There's that one. Let me say middle end. And we have it here. Too much chunk of our packets. So that's off. So anyway, you look inside here, you can see uh, this is the dry belt uh, that drives the, the wheels, and this one here is the, um, the impeller belt that uh, drives the uh, drives the snow shoot, so to speak. So if you look down there now, you can see I'm going to squeeze this belt now, and uh, you can watch the piece will actually move. What happens when you go and you put you put a pull down on the first 
it pours the belt in. We know it's the belt. The belt doesn't go really tight. And what's happening is to a lot of it. You see, she's pulling in, then she's pulling up, and it takes uh, takes some of the takes some, it adds play to it, and it also uh, is not a tension on the belt. Now we didn't look at this belt before because I said one well, of my friends owns it, but I'm pretty well show you there that that belt got a huge cotton to it, so uh, probably going to need a belt for. But well, anyway, uh, that hasn't got a big lot to do with putting the auger belt in. Um, we're probably going to put it up before we bring it back home. I uh, didn't pick up a belt for it. But anyway, as for now, we're going to pull it apart and we're still going to put the, put the bearing in. So we'll take this bracket out next. Got to loosen up a bit already. So the 13 mil uh, wrench fits it, socket or whatever you're using. Take this off and lay that over here with the rest of it. Pull the belt off. As you can see, and she only goes around the pulley. Yep. So anyway, uh, the next thing, I don't want to actually fill them out, take them off camera, but three bolts on this side, and three on the other side. I'll just take them out, and uh, we'll show you how it comes out there now in a few minutes. Okay, so back in. Bolts are out. You see the, in there, out, out on the bottom. Out on this side, actually this side's actually starting to separate already a bit. But anyway, when you look at it, uh, she stood on her chute and on, or sorry, she stood on her bucket and she stood on, that's why I was holding it down. So the minute you separate this now, the back is going to file down and the bucket's going to roll out that way. So with the belt unhooked here, uh, so it'll pull away because it's still on the other piece. We took and we stuck a jack stand down right here, put up under this bolt here. But anything you can use to hold it up, you can have a person hold it up and uh, tie a rope around the beam, around the handlebars here, pull it up. But the minute you pull it apart, it's gonna it's gonna come apart. So anyway, now we'll we take that now and uh, see if we can just should be able to pull this out. So now you got in two pieces, this here and that here. So I'm going to show you another little thing now. So when you uh, put this back together, obviously you're going to lay the belt around here. And you're going to hold it down when you put it together. But when you put it down here, the belt actually got a, as you see, you can see the rubber piece. So when you pull the handle down, pulls that in. It goes, uh, that helps slows the impeller down. So when you take your hand out the controls, this here actually uh, slows the belt down. And actually, when you're putting it together, you may have to come up here and just push this ahead a little so it'll slide in there. So anyway, that's that much. So now I get this piece. So again, uh, we look at the belt. And uh, you can see it's pretty good cotton to it there. So uh, it's a bit of wear around to it, but in the meantime, like that's going to that's just going to fail. Is that that spot there? So anyway, I'll uh, take one and picked up. So come over here. I'm trying to do it. How much it is? So the pulley is uh, here. Is a keyway here? All right. You look down here. So 
So we look down here, there's two uh, square uh, set screws. So they had to be backed off in order to get the pulley off. Okay, so uh, the bolts in here are loosened. Still see my sockets on it. Take it off there now. Didn't really, uh, didn't really find the socket first, but anyway, uh, 10 millimeter uh, six point cap down over it, loosen it. So we'll. Uh, So anyway, uh, this is the this is the puller. We got onto it. Now in the meantime, this is what you should use. Uh, I have taken these off uh, to come out easier, and I have tapped them down through with a with, with a with a hammer and like a punch. But if you go to do that, we're going to have to take it off anyway, so it's almost the same thing. You loosen these two bolts on the sides, on both sides, and uh, you lift it off the floor, and uh, so the bearing will support uh, this piece here, and you push it out so uh, the uh, two augers and the impeller will lock out one piece. But uh, in the meantime, this is a, a really key puller for Princess Auto. She's sort of walking around a bit there right now. And stopped. So I stop now. Anyway, color is pretty well on the side of the period. We had to put a small socket or something on it. So anyway, as you can see here, it's the two set screws sockets of it and they go in one on the keyway and one just uh, sits in there. Keyways right here. So this side. So you're going to want to take the keyway off and that's just a screwdriver and uh, a punch in your hammer. And there's a there's a washer that goes in there. Now all that's left and closer. You can see the bushing is there, and uh, you can see uh, don't get more light onto it. tripod down or something. So anyway, you're going to say, well, I can loosen up these and it's just pull that off and that'll be great. But what's going to happen, the minute you start loosening these, there is a nut and a bolt and it's going to turn on the inside. So while you make it this off, or trying to hold it to pull it out, most likely you're going to have to take the two Bolts on that side, two bolts on that side, and drop the auger out. And I'll show you why now in a second. So you see what happens. I just back the bolts up. Turn. And. So you can reach under them. It's probably more headache than what it's worth. And I see people. Uh, getting up so much, I don't know, because it is in a square, like the square ends on them. You pull them up. Let's pull it up and screw it Have a look.
So as you can see, how the bubbles fell down. All right. So uh, they're only right there. I don't know if you can push them back up or not. But let's take a look at this. So this is our pushing. So you can see she goes in right there. Pull it out. Now uh, this one here, we end up getting the flanges for this. Sometimes this bushing is wore so bad, got the whole piece wore the flange. So as you can see, there's two ends to it. One got this uh, piece onto it that actually rods up against there, and this one got an open end, which is pretty well just a end piece. But the piece with the flat flange onto it, it uh, faces the up into the pulley side. So. Lay it down for one second. Okay, so this is normal again. As you can see, this end piece is up. Alright, goes down over the shaft. Down here. So all you do when you put it in, I'm taking this piece up. This is down. Like so. And uh, how that does goes in there like so I guess the set screw just keeps it from turning and we drop that down there after it puts a grease on move it up inside maybe tap back down Let's just take it off again for a check. The thing is, if we could get the bolts up now, we could bolt it back on. But uh, most likely, uh, I don't think you can get your hands up there or not, but I was going to try it first. But uh, most likely, uh, we're going to take it apart. Okay, so anyway, uh, we're going to have to take the piece out. So, very easy. I just slid the bearing back up half again. It actually came up easier than it went down. Lay that right here for now. And uh, if you look in there, you can see that they're just on the edge there, the screws there. But anyway, uh, so all we're going to do now bang these out on each side. Okay, as you can see, we just put the bolts back in through there. Shut them. Now it comes over this end again. So I'm sort of. Uh, Room here. You put your hand down the shoes. See here. And we take this. At that point, we can probably stand up a little bit. So I always follow on. Screw down like so. And drill the wrong direction. So you leave a little bit loose. So you're worn out because when you go put the impeller in, if this is uh, off center or down, it's going to be harder to put it in. So just uh, leave a little bit loose, a little wiggle room in there. And then we're going to shove the impeller back into it. So 
Well, make sure your cap end stays on. And just pick it up. Of course, I'll knock the board down to get the bolt one on. Now we got it back in, and you're looking at this thing here. Just uh, keep in mind that the shaft goes in through the top up here. Because if by some chance, if you flip this over, the shaft is going in the bottom, it's not going to go in there straight. And uh, you would have been playing with it for a little while before you realize, oh, it's backwards. So. Turn this back now. And as you can see, we're right back here. So uh, now we'll tighten the shaft is in our shoulder. Tighten them up. Reset around here in the back. So now we're going to put the pulley on. Or the, the keyway, the washer, the keyway, then the pulley. Okay, so we're back. A little bit of grease on both sides of the washer. Washer goes down like so. Keyway. Down like so. And obviously, this uh, keyway lines up that keyway, and we put that down. Down so she's flush, and then we tighten up two set screws underneath. I'm sure we got a ratchet. There we go.
and then on the second one. course you gotta tap Musaka. Again if you use the right socket it would have helped but it is a 10 millimeter. That's not the proper one for it but is what I had so that's what's on it. So now all done. No play in it and right now we would so we take the belt, put the belt down to it, start putting it back there. But that's going to be the morning. Uh, yeah, the belt's cracked, so anyway, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, uh, so it's the next day, and we uh, got the new belt. And uh, just to show the actual glue. Just take the new belt with the old belt. You know, just see it's the same. Just make sure. And uh, it is. So anyway, I'm going to come over here. And uh, yeah, we're going to try to put it together. So, remember now the jack stand is under that hold the back of that up. We end up doing it as a this, you just grab a hold of this. And get yeah, pull it over. So we have one side entered a little bit. You see she got it down in there. Push the button over, push the piece over here, and then put it in there. So that's fine right now. You can see we got the, the belt is right there. So all we'll do is uh, just pull the belt out like that, get the rest of the bolts on, and then we put this piece back on. And we'll check back. So all the bolts are on, the guard uh, for the belt. Just push that down here. Bolt is on. And uh, it's pretty well going here in reverse of how it took it apart. Uh, the only other thing is a little bit, it's not tricky, but there's a cable we can put in place here. See if we can do that for now. And put the piece on. So this is, uh, you know, back and forth for the shoot. And up and down for a shoot, right? So, what he ends up uh, doing is that uh, he pushes this down and it moves the cable. Obviously, you won't want to move the cable. Uh, you see, is that cable there? So, when you, when you do when you do put this down in here, and that looks good. good. When you put that down in there. That'll go through here, that goes back on that. But when you when you I'll show you in a second now. When you get this tightened down, uh, you gotta make sure this disengages and engages enough so I'll just get the I'll get the screw into it and I'll just uh, show you in a second. Okay, so as always, this will just go on here. 
and uh, we'll get the bolts in her right here. So I'll stick this in for a second. Now one of them actually had the cable on it. So there's a the front one. Just leave that there for a second for now. So we pull this cable through here. What you're looking for is that you pull this down, she unlocks state. So if you got it too tight, um, if you got the cable too tight, she won't unlock it properly. So that's all you're doing. You're, you're pulling down on this here and uh, Obviously, I haven't got the piece to it. You pull to turn it, right? So, uh, obviously, you got to make sure it, it locks when it's uh, not in operation. So that's actually a good adjustment there. So if you it, when you got the when you got the button lift up, you want to make sure you get teeth engagement, and we got the button the, the blue button down. You want to make sure it disengages. So other than that, that's uh, that's good right there. So anyway, the rest is just put the plastic covers on to it. Uh, we do that next. Okay, so I was getting a little bit ahead of myself earlier, and I'll just lay the camera down for a second. So I just uh, realized then when I put this uh, put the plastic piece on, you got to put the plastic piece on before it's right on. Not a big deal. Just take a few screws out again, pull that back, and this will go on. Put that back and that's it, just tighten it down. So we put this one on now and we can tighten the back of this up again. Switch these are. Turn those on there. And we have cable. Very easy. Same thing. Take the cable up, push that down. This up. So go over here. We need to just feed the cable through for now. A lot of times with the cable, you can actually see where the old mark was. And you're putting this on here. Like you see, it's it's got to be uh, there. A lot of times you can see the mark was here somewhere, or wherever it was. You can uh, put it on, right? It's actually a tin wheel. Check that down. So when you're looking to do that, that's an adjustment too. So as you see the levers all the way back, for that to be uh, all the way back that way, it's probably going to be around here. And as you can see, she's kind of squat out right here. So we'll just, we'll just put that right here like that for now. Okay, so here we have it. Uh, it's all back together. Uh, big thing with it, you want to check, just check the operation of the chute. It's the most important thing. It's basically, it's a, a cable adjustment here and a cable adjustment here. So, 
if uh, that all works, uh, that should, uh, should be fine. Um, another thing to uh, take into consideration is uh, the friction wheel. So obviously the bearing goes in, in there in the, in the front in the impeller bearing, but the friction wheel draws it too. And actually on these Toros, there's a friction wheel wear indicator. Let me show you what's that now. So if you look down here, you see this rod this right here. Uh, we're just going to show up. But when you pull down your lever, see the rod moves in the hole, all right? So if that is going, like she's, she's only halfway in the holder now, so the friction wheel is, is good. And you can usually tell by the time she goes down, it takes up the slack and the rest is just spring tension on it. But as that uh, friction wheel wears, uh, the rod will go completely to the other side and then she'll start uh, slipping and not being able to push up, uh, push the wheels through the snow. So that's another good check on the snowblower. But again, uh, Toros are great snowblowers. Uh, some stuff is overpriced for them. But, uh, you know, and they're, they're not really cheap to buy. Uh, the only thing I, I, I find is overpriced, uh, pick it up and show you, is like that, uh, that cutting edge down here. Uh, I've uh, I, I picked them up and they've been as high as $140 for a piece of flat uh, metal with holes drilled into it. So that and the skids on the side, I think they're, they're probably you know, probably 30 bucks each or something like that to say the size skids there. So most times, the time you do uh, sometimes you do a service on some of these, uh, you time put two skids onto it, two belts onto it. Uh, you put the auger bearing into it and uh, you know, a few other things onto it. It doesn't take long, uh, the cutting edge obviously, it doesn't take long to cast a bit of money. But most times you won't wear that stuff out for years. But I don't know, they're a great snow roar. So, anyway, this uh, will show you what's involved with uh, replacing the uh, impeller bearing. So, anyway, if, uh, if you have one and you, you want to attempt it, uh, it's, 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 not, it's not that bad doing. So, anyway, till next time, we'll see you then.